Hey, what's up? It's your boy, Jack. Like I said before on previous videos, me and my brother have a YouTube channel called Zeal Brothers. If you like what we do, go there, like, and subscribe, and share our videos. We are trying to get the message out for godly men to be strong and courageous. One of the things that I see, and I watch a lot of YouTube videos for entertainment while I do my art, so I see a lot of the people's perspective in our society, including young Christians, one of the, or a lot of people who claim to be young Christians. One of the things that I see often said in error is that a married person, whether it's man or woman, will say, you know, me and my wife just grew apart and we got divorced. We just fell out of love and that's a normal thing. Do you realize the Bible does not say, has ever stated the phrase falling in or out of love? Because the Bible does not look at love in the same way we try to romanticize it today. The Bible talks about love in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And it says, love endures all things. Love is selfless, does not want. Love is, is not something, does not provoke, is not rude. Love is long-suffering. What does that mean? Here's the, one of the big, biggest misconceptions about love that a lot of Christians have. It is an action, not a feeling. I choose to love my wife. I choose to. So the moment I fall out of love, I need to recognize I am choosing to do that. Because since love is an action, it's being self, selfless about myself and choosing to put her needs first above mine. That means that the moment I stop doing that, that is an active choice. I can't just be like, well, the feeling's not there anymore. Guess what? This is a part of the reason why young people's marriages don't survive. It's the main reason because you will see young people and they'll just think that marriage is going to make things better. No, it's an active choice. Do you understand when you get married and you have kids and they wake you up every three hours when they first born, they're going to wake you up every three hours of the night. You're going to be stressed out. You're going to still be working overtime, getting more money because um, the formula that you drink is super expensive. She's going to be working. Probably you going to be working. She's going to have to do motherly things. That are uncomfortable. You're going to have to do fatherly things that are uncomfortable. You're going to have to sell and get rid of your hobbies. She's going to have to stop and cut back on the things she likes to do. You can't just shop and go and um go eating anywhere you want. You got to find somebody to take care of the kids. You got to put your family first. You can't just go out with the boys until 3 a.m. at night anymore. Before you could. You got to be selfless. And people act like... Marriage is just going to be fun. We just going to go together. I hear all these people talk on shows like Kevin Samuels, on shows like MTR, on shows like Fresh and Fit, on shows just like all of those shows, like even the, the women's shows like The Real and, and uh, The View. They get they talk about marriage. We're going to travel and we're going to explore each other and we're just going to love on each other and, and we're going to put each other. It's a partnership. All that stuff is wrong. All that stuff is wrong. The average person does not have enough money to be traveling. The average person does not have enough money to sit down and have um, people babysit for them every day. People come do their laundry, come clean their house. You're going to be doing all of that. So it's going to take an immense amount of selflessness. Don't even get me started on disagreements about dis, dis, how you discipline the kids, who cleans the kitchen, who does this, who does that. Who's going to, when you pay bills and you don't have enough money, what do you do? All these things cause you to have to be selfless in the Christian marriage. The Christian marriage is, the, the marriage in general, the reason why young people cannot survive it today is they go in there expecting it to be a cakewalk. And when they realize the first sign of hardship, they have no long suffering. They don't know how to suffer for something that is not personally benefiting them. And that's why a lot of them do not. They shouldn't be having children. You shouldn't be having children. If you think this child is going to make your life better in any way. Because your life is not going to be made better by a child. It's going to be made harder. So what does that mean? That means that everything you do should be based on love. You know, some people talk about, well, you know, I want my wife to be attractive at all times. That's cool. 
Because, yeah, it's I do believe it's part of a woman's role to try to stay attractive to her husband. But do you know when she's nine months pregnant, eight months pregnant, seven months pregnant, she's going to get big. And it's going to take her the time to take that weight off. And you still got to love her. You still got to do your duty of loving her and saying, this is my wife. This is the one I chose. She's making sacrifices to have my children. I'm going to choose to love her, even though she might not be the most attractive right now. People want to lie and say, yeah, she's still attractive. When your wife is like 50 pounds more than she normally is, that's not going to be the woman that you visualized in marriage. She's not going to be as physically attractive, but you got to say, I love her anyway because of the circumstances. I'm going to choose to love her. Guess what? And on the woman's side, your man going to be going to be you know, struggling. He is not going to be able to communicate like a woman at all times. He's not going to be patient with you on your time of the month all the time. He's not going to understand you all the time. You got to choose to love him. You got to choose, even though he don't speak your language, you got to say, you know what? I love him anyway, even though I don't see that I'm getting understanding from him. Even though our communication is off, I choose to love him anyway. It's not going to get easier. It only gets harder. And the reason why it only gets harder is because problems continue to come. And you, God expects you to grow, not to get weaker. So when he expects you to grow, problems are going to get harder. And if you don't grow alongside of those, those more difficult problems, you're going to get left behind. And then people wonder, oh, we just fell out of love. We just grew apart. Because y'all don't know the definition of love. You thought it was just a feeling that was just going to stay there. And it's really an action that you have to work at every day.